Hey guys, it's Shannon. Before we get started with today's tutorial, I have a little bit of a backstory to tell you, and that is that my mom had sent me a picture of an old baby bed and asked if I wanted it. And before you start thinking anything else, no, we do not need a baby bed, but all I saw when I saw that picture were these gorgeous spindles and how I could repurpose those to create beautiful salvaged home decor. So that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna be creating this plant stand. We had bought a fig plant from Ikea and it wasn't quite tall enough. So I really wanted to create something that would add some height to it. And so I thought that would be the perfect opportunity to cut down some of those beautiful spindles and create a rustic farmhouse inspired plant stand. Now this baby bed had so many spindles on it, so many so that I know that I'm not gonna be able to use them all and I hate keeping them and storing them so I thought why not offer you all a giveaway. So make sure you stay tuned to the end of this video where I'll give you all the details on how to enter to win one of these five spindles that I'll be giving away. Now let's get started with the tutorial. And here's a close-up look at the side piece of the crib that I cut down and you can see there are so many beautiful spindles on this bed. So the first thing I did was just remove the metal hardware from the top and the bottom before I used my circular saw to cut the top and bottom pieces off to free up all of those spindles. So the first thing I did was to square up one of the ends of the spindles before I started cutting them down. I first started at 7 inches high, which is about how high I wanted my stool to be, and later on you'll see that I end up cutting these down a little bit more too. So you do want to adjust your spindles to the height you'd like your plant stand to be. And then I ended up cutting 4 spindles total, one for each corner of the plant stand. And here's a look at the spindles cut down to seven inches long. And also I used a one by eight piece of pine for the top. And I just measured the width to cut it down square. Then it was time to sand that top piece down. I'm using 80 grit sandpaper on my orbital sander for this and I also made sure to kind of round those edges. I sort of wanted a uh, nice finished edge on this. I didn't want them square so I did quite a bit of sanding on the edges and the corners to get a rounded look. I also just hand sanded down the ends of the spindles where I had cut just to smooth down those rough edges. And here you will see me just doing sort of a dry fitting to see how I liked the height of the plant stand which I thought the spindles were a little bit too long for my liking so I ended up taking them back to my miter saw and cutting another inch off. So my spindles ended up being six inches long instead of seven inches long for this size and the part that I cut off was actually really cute and I didn't want to get rid of them so I saved them to create sort of a miniature sized stool. So you'll actually be getting two tutorials in one here because I'm going to show you in just a little bit how I create that mini stool as well. But I'm using my glue bot here to apply wood glue to the end of the spindles before applying them to the top piece of wood. And then I just let those sit and dry before flipping it over to permanently attach them. So again, here are those cute little spindle pieces that I cut off and I'm using a one by three as the top. So I just cut that down square like I did the bigger one. And again, using 80 grit sandpaper, I am rounding out all the edges and corners and making sure that the top and bottom were nice and smooth. 
I'm using my glue bot here again, which I will link down in the description box below. I have it in my Amazon favorite store because it is a favorite of mine to use in the workshop. It doesn't clog and it holds lots of glue, so it's always nice and handy. So I'm just applying wood glue to the spindles again and attaching them to the wood piece and letting those dry before I attach them. After the wood glue had time to dry, I was able to flip the stool over. And here I'm using my brad nailer and one and a quarter inch brad nails to permanently attach the spindles to the top. So I'm just going down through the top and into the spindles and ended up using two nails per spindle. Time to stain the top. I'm using the Rust-Oleum Color Kona. This is a water-based wood stain, so it dries a little bit more quickly, but I still like to let it sit overnight to dry. And I'm just using that to completely cover the top of the plant stands. So now I wanted to give this a more of a whitewashed weathered look because it's going to be going in a dark corner so I feel like this is just going to get lost if um, I don't add some white to it to lighten it up. So I'm going to be doing a new technique here and weathering it using some Vaseline. So this I just got at Walmart and I have a paintbrush for that as well as some white chalk paint and a foam paintbrush for that. And what I'm gonna do is put the uh, Vaseline onto the wood, especially on the edges, because what it's going to do is it's gonna put a barrier between the stain and the paint that we're gonna put over top of it. And then we're gonna come back and wipe off where the Vaseline is put. And that way we'll be able to see um, some of this dark wood stain uh, through the white paint. So it'll give it a really cool chippy aged look. And so I'm just going to use a cloth to wipe it off with. You could also use sandpaper to wipe it off with. But I just kind of want to give you a rundown of what I'm going to be doing. And then you can watch as this gets transformed into more of a chippy farmhouse look. Here's a look at the Vaseline that I added. I probably went a little bit overboard on this, so the less you do, the less that'll rub, rub off. Uh, the more you add, of course, the more that's gonna rub off. So I just kind of touched it here and there. I made sure to really get the corners and the edges, you know, where it would naturally wear. So any high spots is really what you're looking to cover with the Vaseline. I kind of did a little bit less on this little guy here just because he's already so little i just really wanted him to be kind of simple so now what i'm going to do is add a layer of my chalk paint and let that dry
Here's a close up look at it after one coat and you can see already where the paint is just not taking to the wood, which is what we want. So I have one coat on here, but I want two coats. I'm gonna let this dry, flip them over, do two more coats on the unpainted sides, and then I'll come back after that's dried and we will work on removing the paint from the Vaseline areas. And here's a look at it after two coats of paint and it's all dried, so I'm gonna take this is a old flower sack towel that I just cut up and I'm going to use that to sort of buff out the uh, areas where there were Vaseline. Um, and then I also brought up some sandpaper and I might do that a little bit on there too just to make it even more rustic and see how that goes. But yeah, uh, you can definitely tell where there were um, spots of the Vaseline anyway. So that's what I'm gonna work on, is just buffing all that out. tip that I have after doing this is I probably would have put a clear coat over the wood stain because you can see the difference from the top and the spindles. The top has more of a smeary look whereas the spindles that have a clear coat on them have more of a chippy look. So I think next time I would probably take the time to add a coat of polycrylic to the wood stained pine before I applied the Vaseline and did the process of doing the chippy paint look. But nonetheless, I so love how this turned out. It gives it a completely different weathered look versus the different whitewashing techniques that I've used in the past. Next, let's move on to that cute little stand guy. And I did the same process of just removing the paint with a dry cloth before taking some sandpaper to it too. And then that turned out so super cute as well. I think it'd be adorable on a tiered tray, on a shelf, just somewhere where you need just a little bit of height for a small decor piece. Thank you all so much for joining me for this tutorial. I hope that it inspired you. And now it is my turn to give back, and that is with a giveaway. I'm gonna be selecting five lucky winners. Each one will win one of the spindles that you saw me create this stool in, in this tutorial. And all you have to do to enter is be subscribed to my channel. You need to like this video, comment under this video, tell me what would you use your spindle to create. And last, you'll need to head over to either my Facebook page or my Instagram page, find the photo that says giveaway with a picture of these spindles on it and leave me a comment there as well. I will be selecting those five winners and announcing those on Friday, March 15th over on my Facebook page, my Instagram page, as well as the community tab here on my YouTube channel. Thank you all again so much for watching and I will see you in my next tutorial. Bye guys.